Christmas week is a time when many of us catch up on movies, either on our couches or in the theaters. So we turn to our Jeffrey Brown, who kicks off a week-long look at some of the year's best art, starting today with the silver screen. The past year was, as always, a big one for blockbusters, but it was also notable for a number of socially relevant films and movies with a greater sense of diversity and inclusion. The biggest hit of the year, in fact, was Black Panther. We look at other notable offerings with a pair of film critics who we often check in with, Ann Hornaday of the Washington Post and Mike Sargent, chief film critic for WBAI and co-president of the Black Film Critics Circle. Welcome back to both of you. I Thank want to you. start Thank with you. one that you both had on your list. It was If Beale Street Could Talk. And why that one? This is just an exquisite movie. It's an adaptation of the James Baldwin novel by Barry Jenkins, whose film Moonlight won Best Picture a couple of years ago. And um, I think what I love about Barry Jenkins' work, and, and it's exemplified in this movie, is that it's not just about plot, it's not just about characters, even though this story is deeply meaningful and the characters are vivid, but this movie is told in such a rich way, so visually um, and so emotionally, that it just becomes an exercise almost in visual poetry and feeling. I mean, yeah. the, the ultimate takeaway is one of feeling rather than story, and I, and I love that. Okay, we've got a short clip of that. Let's take a look. This is a sacrament, and no, I ain't lost my mind. We are drinking to new life. Tish gonna have Fonny's baby. Mike Sargent, why did you pick this film? Well, I picked this film for a number of reasons, and and like Anne said, you know, he has a, the the ability to make something very emotional, almost visceral, and and he also can take material that you may have seen before in a, in a movie, a story like Beale Street. We've seen a lot of the themes that are in Beale Street have been done before, but Barry Jenkins can really cast a spell as you're watching the film. You're, you're swept up in the feeling and the music and the cinematography and the acting and the characters, and it, it literally casts a spell on you, and it, it makes you, as Anne said, you come away with a feeling. You've just gone through something when you see this movie. So it, this is a movie that should have been made a long time ago, but I'm glad it is now made by this filmmaker. Okay, glad it's now around. So Anne, give us a couple, give us two more, briefly. Uh, two that I'm just uh, I, that I love. One is called Roma by Alfonso Cuarón. Mm -hmm. Very similar to Beale Street in a way, in terms of just um, the cinematography and the the acting and the the way that he structures the narrative is just engulfing. It's just an immersive experience and a really grand one. And another one called The Rider, which came out earlier this year by Chloe Zhao. She kind of reimagines the American Western using an entire cast of non-professional actors, most of them real-life cowboys. So it manages to sort of merge the mythic American West with something much more kind of um, daily and gritty and real. And I just, I just loved the vision of it. I really have to say A Quiet Place. I don't know if you know the premise of The Quiet Place is it's the nope. future, aliens have come, they've killed most human, but they realize that the aliens can't see, but they can hear you. So if you stay quiet, you can live. And this is a film directed by John Krasinski, and it stars him and his wife, Emily Blunt. Movies and good stories are about setup and payoff. This movie sets so many things up so well and pays off so well, completely made me look at John Krasinski differently. And the second film, I may get killed for this because most of my colleagues, uh, black film critics, don't agree, but Green Book. I loved Green Book. Uh -huh. I thought it was a great film, and and a lot of the criticism is that you know the magical Negro and the tropes and that it brings out and its spirit. But I mean, Hollywood makes Hollywood movies. It's a road movie. It's a buddy movie. It's a movie about two people's lives who were changed by the fact that they connected. And I think that's what it is, and I think it does it very, very well. We asked you both to pick out a performance that stood out for you, and Ann, you chose Ethan Hawke playing a pastor in the film. First reform. Let's take a look. Courage is the solution to despair. Reason provides no answers. We can't know what, what the future will bring. We have to choose despite uncertainty. Anne, tell us about that. 
This is an extraordinary performance by Ethan Hawke, who has been so good in so many movies the last few years. I feel like we've almost watched him grow up on screen. He started as that cute young guy in the rom-coms, and he is aging so beautifully in this role as a, as a, a troubled priest trying to pastor to his community while he's undergoing his own crisis of faith. It's all there on his face. I mean, he's he's great with the dialogue. This is written and directed by Paul Schrader, and, and Ethan Hawke really um, commands all of the feeling and the, and the verbiage of the screenplay, but it's really his face and the expressiveness of the age lines on his face and, and the expression in his eyes that I think is just overwhelming. It's just a, it's just a tour de force for him. And Mike Sargent, you picked uh, Christian Bale doing an uncanny uh, Dick Cheney in uh, the film Vice. Let's watch that. The vice presidency is a mostly symbolic job. Uh -huh. However, if we came to a uh, different understanding, I can handle the more mundane jobs overseeing bureaucracy, military energy and uh, foreign policy. Yeah, right. I like that. All right, Michael, that one brings a smile. I can't help but smile at that one. Well, this is the story of Dick Cheney and how he ended up becoming the, the vice president and, and a lot of things that led up to him being the Dick Cheney we all know. You really forget that you're watching Christian Bale. I mean, the makeup helps, but he's got the mannerisms, the speech. He gained 45 pounds for the role. It really makes you understand Dick Cheney as a man. And I was never clearly a fan of Dick Cheney, but watching it, you kind of go, oh, I, I get Dick Cheney now, and I understand him. And it's really largely due to the performance that Christian Bale gives. And I have to say, Adam McKay, his take on things, his fractured narrative, the humor, it's a really surprisingly good movie and a fantastic performance. I want to ask you both, you know, we've asked you this in the past, something that got lost or overlooked, that, that one film that you tell your loved ones or best friends, you know, you got to see this. Anne? Well, one that, um, that I wish more people had seen is First Man, um, with Ryan Gosling playing Neil Armstrong. It's a masterful movie, and it's a very deeply patriotic movie, and, a, and another deeply emotional movie about a man processing his own grief by isolating himself in space and the visceral kind of verite style really puts you right into the capsule with him. I thought it was a thrilling experience. Mike, Sergeant, what have you got? Well, mine is a film that came out towards the end of the year and it just did a limited run and it's The Making of the Five Heartbeats by Robert Townsend. This is a film that looks back on this, it's kind of a seminal film, it was way ahead of its time, didn't do well at the box office, but seeing what he did as he looks back, all the auditions he had, what he went through with the studios, how they told him it wouldn't work, how, you know, the racism he, he experienced, all of that, it really brings you back to that time here in America, but it makes you, any artist, anybody who has anything they want to do will be inspired by this film. It could be subtitled Persistence of Vision. It's really one, do not miss it wherever you can see it. All right, some of the best of 2018, Ann Hornaday, Mike Sargent. Thank you both again. Thank you. You're welcome.